Westworld Season 4 Episode 7 Ending Explained Well, the penultimate episode has come to a close and what an episode it was, with it resulting in all-out chaos being present within the city and multiple revelations occurring along the way with some reunions, I thought I'd recap, break down and explain all that there was to take away from the episode, so let's get into it. Here is Westworld Season 4 Episode 7 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This episode was titled Metanoia, and just like the definition of the word, in the meaning that it's a change in one's life, I think it could well be referring to William and his arc in this season, and the change in direction that he took in this specific episode. Despite being somebody that you've wanted to break free from Hale's grasp, what he became was something far worse. The first thing that we saw in this episode was one version of events that played out whilst Bernard was in the Sublime. Both Maeve and himself were at the Hoover Dam that we saw in episode 1 of the show. They broke in and were trying to open up the gateway to the valley beyond, something that Bernard only has the power to do. However, we saw them get destroyed by one of the guards. And then following that, we saw the exact same scene play out, but this time with a different ending where they successfully managed to open it and then walked away. I think this is something that's going to be key as we embark onto the final episode in the show. As per usual, I'm going to break this video down by the main characters that we had in the episode, Christina and Teddy. The first we saw of Christina was the usual awakening sequence that we've seen all throughout the season, but this time we had Teddy by her bedside. We saw her enter the bathroom following last week's discovery around everything not being what it seemed, and we saw her get in the bath and stay under the water. She began to choke, but by the end of it, we saw that she was unable to die in this world, which was a nod to the revelation that we had at the end of this episode, where we found out that she wasn't actually present there. She was being tricked into thinking that she was actually there by being susceptible to choking, but once it passed the point of it, you could see that she was absolutely fine. Following the revelation in last week's episode, where Christina found out that she was able to control things that happen in this world, we saw her head towards Olympiad Gaming Headquarters with the intentions of getting to the bottom of why she could do what she could do. We saw her utilize her powers on the individuals that worked there, and she got them to evacuate the building whilst setting off a fire alarm so that they had the place to themselves to explore. Here was when we saw her venture out the back where we saw her go for the first time last week. This was when we saw her pass Caleb who was contained in the cell that Hale had put him in, and both of them went unnoticed by him. This was also another nod to the revelation later on in the closing moments, where we found out that Christina wasn't actually in the world and she can't interact with or be seen by anybody else. Teddy has been drip-feeding her the information that she needs, which I'm finding a little bit frustrating, because he's almost talking in riddles in the sense that he knows what's going on, but he's just letting Christina find out by herself, and when she doesn't, he just tells her anyway. So I do find that a bit odd. Just like Christina, he's not really in the city either, as we saw that he wasn't being noticed by anybody in the world other than her. So it makes me think that the both of them are together somewhere. Dolores could have a backup of herself within the Sublime, and she could be projecting herself into the world that way. With the chaos and devastation that's being caused, and the rip in the Hoover Dam being something that wasn't really explained in the episode, it could well be opening it up for Dolores to potentially come and save the day and stop William from destroying the people that reside there. William William is a character that I've really enjoyed watching over the course of Season 4. We've seen him go from Hale's loyal companion to a solo-thinking traitor that's fully embodied the man in the black hat that we all remember from the early seasons of the show. And this can be seen when we saw him leave the building in his iconic black hat Cementing the refamiliarization of this person and tying into what the human form of William said to him earlier on, in the sense that he's present within him and it's spreading. William had been battling with inner thoughts on his self purpose and meaning, and we saw in this episode when the threat of losing the world that he's become so attached to, and also his human form that he's taken, it caused him to act out and throw Hell's plans out of the window. The human form of William informed the host version of how they're in this world to destroy and to not transcend, which is exactly what he needed to hear to then carry out the actions that we went on to see. We saw him kill Maeve as she was facing off with Hale. He then killed Hale, and then once at the top of the tower, he interrupted Bernard and then proceeded to kill him. 
William then went on to create a message that would be emitted over the town, and it caused all of the people residing there to unleash chaos onto the city, and fight until the last people remained, the cockroaches of the world that the human William mentioned earlier. He stated how we're finally living up to our potential, which is what he's been told to believe by the human form of William. With this, the last we saw of him was him embodying the previous version of himself with the black hat as he walked out of the tower and it blew up behind him, showing that it's almost going to be impossible to stop what's happening right now, as there's now no way of communicating to the people that live there on a mass scale. Bernard Bernard's presence has always been that of a mystery throughout season 4, and it finished that way too. We know that he spent time witnessing all outcomes of this situation play out, and it was revealed to us in this episode that in every timeline, both himself and Maeve end up dying in them. There's no happy ending for them, and we saw exactly that play out. We saw Bernard go towards the tower and make it to the top, where we saw him speaking a message into the system which stated, There's time only for one more game. If you choose to give her that choice, you can't miss. Reach with your left hand. He said this before he was interrupted by William walking in. This line was very ominous in the sense that there's no inclination as to who he's speaking with. This message could be intended for anybody, but as we saw when he fell, it does look as though the message did send through. We saw him face off against William where it was revealed to us that in every path that he's seen, he ends up dying. And with that, we bid farewell to Bernard. However, I definitely don't think it's going to be the last we see of him as we head into the season finale. Dead definitely doesn't mean dead in Westworld, and with that message being stated, it's got to have a stronger meaning behind it. Maeve Maeve's arc is one that I've enjoyed watching this season, and in this episode it was no different. Following us seeing her being revived and reactivated, we found out that she was in fact a copy of the real version of Maeve that's in the Sublime. She set off on the mission with Bernard where we saw her face off against Hale as she entered the tower. We saw them face off as a way of mainly distracting Hale to allow Bernard to be present at the top of the tower to record the message. During the fight, we saw her ultimately get destroyed by William, after putting up a decent fight against Hale and the drone host. It's a shame that she was destroyed so soon after returning, as I would have loved to have seen a Maeve and Caleb reunion. Hale Just like many other characters in this episode, Hale also met her fate at the hands of William. We saw her emit a tone to the population that today was going to be the final day for them to be present in their human form, and the act of transcending would be beginning, which would allow them to spend their existence in the form that they were intended to be in. We had heard that many of them had become infected and were destroying themselves, so that was something that most likely sped up the making of her decision to getting the transcending motion in place. This was the start of her demise as it was something that William didn't want to participate in. We witnessed her speaking with Caleb where she said how she recreated him for the purpose of bait in order to lure the rebels to the facility and it was something that did most certainly work. We saw Hale battling with her own internal feelings about transcending as it seemed as though she herself had become so attached to her human form too. We got this when she approached the seat where the process takes place and she said, I'm ready now which made me think that she'd been questioning it for some time, despite the fact that she was pushing it upon others to do so. We saw her battle with Maeve where she was definitely losing, but in the end, the last words that she heard was that of William saying that it's his game of survival of the fittest now, before then being taken out. She should have seen that William was turning, but I think she had her own self-conflict that was present, and the losing of the grasp of the city that she deemed herself ruler of was something that was bound to make her lose sight of her immediate surroundings. Caleb and Frankie We started the episode by seeing that Caleb had been recreated again, one final time with the intention of luring the rebels to their location, where it worked, and we saw both Frankie and Stubbs appear with the intention of rescuing Caleb from the cell that he was in. This was when we saw the reunion of the father and daughter. Frankie was surprised to see that Caleb still looked the same, and you could see the doubt in her eyes on if she could trust him, as she uttered, what did she do to you? knowing full well that he's now a host as his appearance had not changed at all. However, she chose to trust him. As they left the tower, we saw them get caught up in the chaos that was unfolding on the ground, just after William's message had gone live in the city and all hell had broken loose. We know based on what Bernard said to Stubbs earlier on that he doesn't make it out alive, and despite a small smile on his face as he closed the gate on the group thinking that he's made it, I somehow feel there's something worse to come. With Frankie now injured as well, it could mean that she may not come in handy as much in the final episode, but we'll have to see. There's a lot at stake, 
and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the season finale. So, there you have it. Westworld Season 4 Episode 7 Ending Explained What did you think of Season 4 Episode 7? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.